Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the artillery of the Imperial Guard and covering some of the most fundamental principles of using these big guns. So it's no secret that the artillery of the Imperial Guard is some of the coolest and most quintessential units of the faction. I mean everyone has this idea in the head of the Imperial Guard being waves of infantry and tanks backed up by battalions of artillery pounding the enemy to dust and it is that superior firepower of the guard that always wins the day. And whilst as a principle that is true, the artillery is a really fundamental key part of the image of the Imperial Guard. But the thing is, a lot of people kind of have the wrong impression of what you can do with your artillery when you're using it on the tabletop. You see, all too often I will see newer players get into the Imperial Guard and they're going to buy themselves quite a lot of artillery. Several basilisks and manticores and wyverns, maybe even some forge world units like the Medusa and the Colossus. And they have this idea that if they just take all this artillery, then they will be able to pound their enemy into dust. They will not be able to hide from their big guns. And it doesn't matter what the defensive profile of the enemy is. If I drop a shell on it, it's going to explode. Now, artillery guns are very good in the Imperial Guard. But there is this misconception that they can be considered like the main damage dealers. Like you can rely upon your artillery to do the heavy lifting in your guard army. And from a competitive point of view, that simply is not the case. And if you try and make your artillery do the heavy lifting in your guard army, you are going to struggle and you are going to find more often than not that your attacks are going to be unsuccessful, your defenses are going to crumble, and you are not going to be winning the games the way that you thought you were going to be winning them. And this misconception can lead to newer players feeling a little bit disheartened. What's the point in taking all of these big guns if they can't even do any damage? I thought guards were meant to be a shooting army. I'm going to go back to my Tau. They seem to have much better guns. And the thing is, is you're just not quite using the artillery correctly if you're expecting it to be the main source of damage in your army. You see, the thing is, artillery is not the main source of damage. Artillery, and this is the key fundamental principle, and this is the one thing that you learn from this video, then pay attention now. Artillery is not the main source of damage in your guard army. Artillery is what we call supplementary firepower, all right? That means that it supplements the rest of your firepower, but it is not core firepower. It is not fundamental firepower. It is supplementary firepower. Now, what do we mean by this? Can I give some examples? And if this isn't fundamental firepower, what is? So I don't know if it's a proper term, but supplementary firepower is something that I've sort of come up with to refer to the basilisk and the manticores and your other artillery pieces. What I mean by that term is that on its own, your artillery is rarely enough to win a battle. On its own, it's rarely enough to even kill a full unit. A single basilisk is unlikely to kill a full enemy unit of the opponent. Even something as simple as a squad of grots or orcs or maybe even enemy guardsmen, rarely is a basilisk or a manticore or a wyvern going to pick all of those models up in one go. They are not fundamental firepower. They don't have the power one-on-one -on -one to delete enemy units. What they can do, though, is support your other firepower. So, for example, let's say you have something like a tank commander, okay? Now, a tank commander is what I would describe as fundamental firepower, especially something like a tank commander with a demarche cannon. Demarche cannons on tank commanders are some of the best firepower that guard has access to. You have the ability to get 2d6 shots, of which you can reroll both of the dice on those shots to work out how many you're going to get, which gives you a really reliable output of fire you hit on a three plus you've got real ones to hit you also have the ability if you're facing off against an enemy vehicle to do maximum number of shots via stratagems like hail of fire there's just all these ways and stratagems and means that you can just get the most out of that demarche cannon and that means that it can just pick up an enemy unit in one go however we are playing a dice game and sometimes things don't always go the way we're going to go. Sometimes you're just facing a particularly tough enemy unit and that demarch cannon doesn't quite do the business, doesn't quite pick up all the models that you're expecting it to pick up or take the big chunk out that you're expecting it to do. This is where our artillery comes in. 
This is where our supplementary firepower comes in. This is where you have got a really badly damaged enemy unit. Maybe there's just one or two of them left, but you really need them to die. Now, you don't want to necessarily waste another demolisher cannon on them. You might not have line of sight with anything else that can really do it what you need to do. That's where your units like your basilisks and your manticores and your other artillery pieces come into play. That's where you can go, okay, well, rather than, you know, firing another tank command thing, I'm going to go over to my other piece of firepower, this little basilisk I've got hiding behind line of sight. And I'm just going to pop D6 basilisk rounds at you. I only necessarily need one, maybe two of those to go through. And then when that does go through and I pick up that remainder of that enemy unit, I finish off that enemy tank, that enemy knight, whatever it may be. Then you go, okay, well, you know what? Now I'm going to go back to that second tank commander and I'm going to delete another enemy unit. And so you've created a lot more efficiency by being clever with your firepower. But most importantly, you have supplemented that first tank commander's firepower with the firepower of the basilisk. And it doesn't really work the other way around. And that's how you can tell whether something is fundamental firepower, core firepower, or supporting firepower, supplementary firepower. Now, I know that this supplementary firepower idea doesn't sound quite as sexy as just blowing the enemy up with waves after waves of artillery, carpet bombing the whole area, crashing upon them, just a rain of artillery shells. I know, but trust me, it is absolutely inviolable and it is essential to having a good guard army you need to have those backup systems in place you need to have those redundancies where if something doesn't quite go right it is a dice game at the end of the day you have something in place that allows you to be able to manipulate the dice in your favor and having a backup system like a basilisk like a manticore is really really important i cannot tell you the number of times i have been in a tournament game and we have been at a critical turn and my tank commanders have just not quite done what they've needed to do Maybe I put my opponent past a few more invulnerable saves than I needed them to. Maybe my dice were a little bit of a whiffer. Who knows? It's a dice game at the end of the day. But the number of times where I've been in a situation where my opponent's gone, ha, I think I've managed to get through your firestorm there. I think I managed to survive that guard firepower. And I've gone, no, I've still got my artillery to fire. Let me shoot my basilisk. Let me shoot my manticles. Let me shoot my reducers. And my opponent has gone, oh, I totally forgot about the artillery. Ah, and then it just finishes him off and it swings the game back in my favor. The number of times where my supplementary firepower has done just what it needed to do to swing the game back in my favor, has done just what it needed to do to save my crappy dice rolls is just, I, I can't tell you how many times I've happened. Every single tournament, every single event that I go to, there's that moment where I go, thank God I took just a couple of artillery pieces. Thank God I took that mortar pit, okay? Because it has saved my bacon many, many times. Now that goes to everything that I wanted to talk about in today's episode, but there are other principles of artillery that I want to talk about in future episodes. But I want to keep these episodes relatively short and sweet and easy for my audience to digest. If you enjoyed today's video, then please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see some more episodes on Imperial Guard artillery and other tactics, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know what you think down in the comment section as well. Those likes, those subscriptions, those comments, they all make a huge difference when it comes to boosting this video on the all-knowing yet mysterious YouTube algorithm. If you really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more content like this and support my channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to the generous support of my channel members of my patrons that I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. And you get a whole host of perks with being a patron, being a channel member, but with the big one being you get access to the Mordian Glory Discord, where we have loads of just constant talk and chatter and memes and tactics and great activity all going on inside that Discord server. And I just want to take a moment to say a thank you and a shout out to the latest people that have signed up to the Mordian Glory channel. So a big thank you to Travis Wyckoff, Boris the Conqueror, Colin Ford, Grimnar, Pretax Foil, Born Not to Run, Wayne Catlin, Bonsai Kitty Gaming, Dead Tone, Samuel Martin, Alstrom Aurelius, Mark Flanagan, and Ernest Brown. Thank you guys for doing your part and signing up to the Mordian Glory channel. 
I also want to say a big thank you to the latest Patreon supporters as well. Thank you to Moon Prune, 700th Black Templar, Waiting for Something to Happen, Nick Hooper, and Leo King Art. Thank you guys. I really appreciate your ongoing Patreon support. And last but certainly not least, I want to say a big personal heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier patreon supporters these are the war masters so a big thank you to navy veteran philip french ross miller tequal alex dengal john stubbs nicholas walsh swordfish trombone diesel fox tom sutton and of course august varney thank you guys for going above and beyond when it comes to supporting me i really appreciate all of your support i hope you've all enjoyed today's video Thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.